Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of today's lecture is Hamarto neoplastic syndromes. In this topic, I am going to discuss four very common and important syndromes neurofibromatosis, tuberous sclerosis, Gardner syndrome, and Cowden syndrome. So, first, neurofibromatosis. The neurofibromatosis comprises several distinct genetic disorders that lead to the formation of tumors surrounding the nerves, as the name signifies, and variety of other pathological features. And there are two main forms, the neurofibromatosis one and neurofibromatosis two. The gene for neurofibromatosis one, which is the most common form, is located in chromosome 17. The neurofibromatosis 1 gene has now been cloned and encodes a protein that is named as neurofibromin and acts as suppressor of tumor activity. The classical Nutson two hit hypothesis of tumor genesis says there is a random acquisition of somatic mutations that partly explains the delayed age of onset of the tumor associated with neurofibromatosis 1 and variability of expression. Criteria of diagnosis of neurofibromatosis 1, that, that is NIH consensus conference. And according to this criteria, two or more of the following should be present to label a patient as neurofibromatosis 1. The first is six or more cephalae macules, which should be over five millimeter in prepubertal children and over 15 millimeter in postpubertal individuals. Two or more neurofibromas of any type or one plexiform neurofibroma. Freckling in axilla or inguinal region. Optic gliomas. Two or more leash nodules. Sphenoidal dysplasia. Or thinning of long bone cortex with or without pseudoarthrosis. And the last criteria is a first degree relative that is parent, sibling or offspring with neurofibromatosis by the above criteria. So this uh, criteria for diagnosis of neurofibromatosis has seven features, among which there are three cutaneous features. Among the three cutaneous features, the first is cephalae macules, which should be at least six. The sizes are different, prepubertal and postpubertal. Two or more neurofibroma of any type or one plexiform neurofibroma. And the third is axillary or inguinal freckling. There are two eye criterias that include uh, optic glioma or two or more leash nodules in the iris. Then there is one bony criteria which include sphenoidal dysplasia as well as thinning of long bone. And the last criteria is presence of the uh, neurofibromatosis one that is meeting the above criteria in a first degree relative. Cephalae macules. Cephalae macules are the first feature of the disease to appear in all children. This appears well before the neurofibroma sets in. The macule increase in size and number during the first decade. We need only six to make the diagnosis of neurofibroma. Neurofibromas. Neurofibromas are soft, lilic pink tumors, sessile and doom shaped, and sometimes pedunculated. These lesions are most numerous on the trunk and limbs. Hundreds may be present ranging from few millimeter to several diameter, several centimeter in diameter, as the picture shows. 
so these are lilac pink soft sessile growths plexiform neurofibroma the plexiform neurofibroma is a diffuse elongated fibroma along the course of a nerve frequently involving trigeminal or upper cervical nerves usually noticeable within first two years of life and has a distinct bag of worm appearance on palpation neurofibromatosis 1 can be extremely disfiguring you can see the complete distortion of facial features by this tumor there is extensive replacement of dermis and subcutaneous fat by homogeneous pale yellow tumor diffuse neurofibromas freckling in axilla is an independent criteria for diagnosis this is also called as the cross sign present in 70% of the affected subjects appear a little later in later than cephalic macules and around 3 years of age in this picture there is a cephalic macule and multiple axillary freckling seen leash nodules leash nodules are pigmented iris hamartomas they appear as doom shaped lesions found around the iris on slit lamp examination occur in about 90% of patients and are asymptomatic but helps to confirm the diagnosis at least two should be present to fulfill the diagnostic criteria the severity of cutaneous involvement gives no reliable indication to the extent of disease in other organs between 25 and 30% of children exhibit learning difficulties and physical development may also be impaired the most common solitary intracranial tumor is an optic nerve glioma astrocytoma and schwannoma sarcomatous changes within neurofibromas varies from 1.5 to 15% cases and most often seen in deeper than in cutaneous lesions enlargement or pain suggests the possibility of malignant change although rapid enlargement may follow hemorrhage so such rapidly enlarging lesions must be excised as soon as possible pruritus may be a symptom of neurofibromatosis the cause is presence of large number of mast cells in the skin there is a response to itching to the response to itching by use of antihistamines early onset and rapid progression before puberty usually indicates a poor prognosis extensive involvement of urinary or gi tract or the central nervous system again carries a poor prognosis so at presentation a detailed clinical assessment is essential that must in include examination of other members of the family parents and siblings should have their eye examined for the presence of leash nodules investigation must include the neurophysical assessment skeletal survey audiography and slit slit lamp ocular examination the treatment is usually symptomatic the more disfiguring lesions can be excised if they are not too diffuse surgery is also indicated when an increase in size and pain suggest a malignant change or sarcomatous change in the lesions epilepsy should be thoroughly investigated as neurosurgical relief is sometimes practicable there should be a prolonged follow up with routine checks every 12 months with neurological and ophthalmological examination neurofibromatosis 2 gene for neurofibromatosis 2 is located in chromosome number 
that encodes a protein that is named as schonomin. Neurofibromatosis 2 is characterized by bilateral vestibular schonomas, which are also called as acoustic neuromas, as well as other central nervous system tumors of meningeal or glial origin. Cephalae spots, cutaneous neurofibromas may be seen, but are usually few in number and much less common as we see in neurofibroma 1, neurofibromatosis 1. The diagnostic criteria of neurofibromatosis 2 include four points. Each of the criteria is sufficient for diagnosis. Number one is bilateral acoustic neuromas, either proven histologically or seen by MRI. Number two, parent, sibling, or ch child with neurofibromatosis 2 and either a unilateral acoustic neuroma or one of the following meningioma, glioma, schonoma, posterior subcapsular lenticular opacities, or cerebral calcification. So, presence of bilateral acoustic neuromas are a sufficient criteria for diagnosis of neurofibromatosis 1. But if only one acoustic neuroma is present or a meningeal tumor is present like meningioma, glioma, or schonoma, or posterior subcapsular lenticular opacity, then in presence of this solitary lesion, if there is a family history of neurofibromatosis 2, then that patient will also have a confirmed diagnosis of neurofibromatosis 2. Unilateral acoustic neuroma and one of the following, that is meningioma, glioma, schonoma, posterior subcapsular lenticular opacities or cerebral calcification. So the third criteria is presence of a unilateral acoustic neuroma plus one of the CNS tumor. And last of the criteria is multiple meningioma, that is two or more. And one of the following, glioma, neurofibroma, schonoma, posterior subcapsular lenticular opacities, and cerebral calcification. So presence of multiple meningiomas with other CNS tumors also fulfill the criteria of neurofibromatosis 2. Segmental neurofibromatosis. This is characterized by cephalae spots, cutaneous neurofibromas, and sometimes visceral neurofibromas limited to circumscribed body segment. This probably represents a somatic mutation, somatic mosaicism of neurofibroma 1 gene. There is no risk of neurofibroma 1 occurring in their offsprings. Diffuse neurofibroma, as I have shown one of the picture, it is described as 3 to 8 centimeter hard sclerotic plaques with an irregular surface, but without protruding nodules present for 1 to 12 years. Excision reveals infiltration beyond the clinical margins and malignant transformation in one. Early diagnosis and prompt surgical treatment is recommended. This is a diffuse neurofibroma. Cephalae spots and pulmonary stenosis. In three families, cephalae macules are associated with pulmonary stenosis low intelligence, freckling in axilla, perineum, and elsewhere. There was no other evidence of neurofibromatosis. Cephalae spots occur independently, and uh, if only cephalae macules are present in an individual with new, no, new, no other criteria, then the patient will not be labeled as neurofibroma. Neurofibromatosis and Noonan syndrome. Such patients have feature of both neurofibromatosis 1 and Noonan syndrome. Several studies support the view that neurofibromatosis and Noonan syndrome is a variant of neurofibromatosis 1 and caused by mutation of neurofibromatosis 1 gene. Legius syndrome. The cardinal feature of Legius syndrome is, is 
मल्टीपल कैफोले मैक्यूल्स मैक्रो केफेली एंड एक्सिलरी फ्रैक्लिंग लिगियर सिंड्रोम अपीयर्स टू बी डिस्टिंग्विश क्लिनिकली बाय द एब्सेंस ऑफ लीच नोड्यूल्स एंड न्यूरोफाइब्रोमास एंड जेनेटिकली बाय एब्सेंस ऑफ न्यूरोफाइब्रोमेटोसिस वन जीन म्यूटेशन स्पेसिफिकली स्प्रेड वन जीन इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर लीगियर सिंड्रोम एंड रीजन इज आइडेंटिफाइड एट क्रोमोजोम नंबर फिफ्टीन आर एसोपैथीज न्यूरोफाइब्रोमेटोसिस वन एंड लीगियर सिंड्रोम are part of large group of disorders which are named as rasopath rasopathies these are autosomal disor uh, dominant disorders caused by mutation affecting various component of ras mitogen activating activated protein kinase pathway these disorders include av malformation syndromes cardio facio cutaneous syndromes costello syndrome Ligier syndrome, neurofibromatosis one, Noonan syndrome, and Noonan syndrome with multiple lentigenosis. The regrouping of these disorder under one entity has led to possibility of therapeutic interventions targeted RAS and MAPK pathways. Now, the second important disease uh, syndrome which we are going to discuss today is. the tuberous sclerosis complex the word complex is added recently with the tuberous sclerosis this disease was named as epola epiloia or bonvel disease tuberous sclerosis complex is now the preferred name for the condition that was previously known as tuberous sclerosis and it represents a genetic disorder of hematomatous formation in many organs particularly skin brain eye kidney and heart it's again an autosomal dominant disorder of hematoma formation in many organs the term complex emphasize the multi system involvement and variable expression of the disease the old term epiloia indicates the clinical triad of epilepsy low intelligence and adenoma sebaceum epilepsy is epi and low intelligence is l o i and a is adenoma sebaceum the birth incidence may be in a region of 1 in 5800 which makes tuberous sclerosis complex is one of the most common single gene disorder the genetic linkage studies first map the tsc gene on chromosome 9 but it is now recognized that about half of the tuberous sclerosis complex families are linked to 9q34 which is called as the tcs gene 1 tsc gene 1 and other half to 16p13 which is now labeled as TSC gene two. TSC gene one has not yet been cloned, but TSC two gene encodes a protein that is named as the tuberin. Loss of tuberin activity is thought to lead to activation of RAP one in tumor of patient with tuberous sclerosis complex. There is no obvious phenotypic differences in Fam in between the families that are linked to TSC one or TSC two genes, approximately sixty to seventy percent of tuberous sclerosis complex cases are thought to be result of a new mutation. The characteristic feature of the syndrome are skin lesions, mental retardation, and epilepsy. but these show very wide variation in age of onset and severity most of the lesions are hematomas of vascular and mesenchymal tissue the lesions are slow growing and produce symptoms by pressure effect and occasionally by hemorrhage from vascular lesions most of the cutaneous lesions show an excess of collagen the white ash leaf shaped macules contain abnormal melanocyte with reduced 
tyrosinase activities tyrosinase activities the characteristic tuberous sclerotic nodule of glial proliferation may occur anywhere in the cerebr cerebral cortex basal ganglia and ventricular walls the clinical features onset is before the age of 5 years with cutaneous changes or with epilepsy although the disease may remain latent until adolescence or adult life the diagnostic criteria determined by committee of us national tuberous sclerosis association a definitive diagnosis of tuberous sclerosis complex require two major features brain mri or non enhanced ct renal ultrasound or echocardiogram may be necessary the diagnostic criteria there are major features and there are minor features. first we will uh, enlist the major features facial angiofibromas or forehead plaque multiple angiofibroma or solitary forehead plaque this is the first criteria then non traumatic angual or periangual fibromas hypomelanotic macules which are also known as ash leaf macules we should be more than 3 shagreen patch multiple retinal nodular hematomas cortical tubers sub ependymal nodules sub ependymal giant cell astrocytoma cardiac rhabdomyoma single or multiple lymph angiomatosis myomatosis and renal angiomyolipoma so among the major features there are four skin lesions that is facial angiofibromas subangual or periangual fibromas ash leaf macules or shagreen patch there are four cns tumors that is retinal nodular hematoma cortical tuber sub ependymal nodules or sub ependymal giant cell astrocytoma one cardiac one renal and one lymph angiomyomatosis the minor frety features or minor criteria are multiple randomly distributed pits in the dental enamel hematomatous rectal polyps bone cyst cerebral white matter migration lines gingival fibromatosis non renal hematomas retinal achromic patch confetti skin lesions and multiple renal cysts for a definitive diagnosis of neurofibromatosis uh, sorry definitive diagnosis of tuberous sclerosis complex two major features or one major and two minor features must be present for the probable diagnostic diagnosis one major and one minor feature is sufficient for possible diagnosis one major feature or two or more minor feature if present then we can label it as a possible diagnosis of tuberous sclerosis complex clinical features angiofibromas which were previously called as adenoma sebaceum which was a misnomer because there is no sebaceous activity in such tumors and histologically they are mainly angiomatous proliferation with fibromatous proliferation usually seen between ages of 3 to 10 they are firm discrete red brown telangiectatic papules 1 to 10 mm in diameter extending from the nasolabial furrows to the cheek and chin and are occasionally found on the ears then periangual fibromas or coenin tumor these are periangual fibromas shown the little thing little toe appear after puberty as a smooth firm flesh colored excrescence emerging from the nail fold they are usually 5 to 10 mm in length but may be very large the shagreen patch is irregularly thickened slightly elevated 
soft skin colored plaque usually in the lumbosacral region ash leaf macule is a white macule 1 to 3 cm in length and it is a very valuable physical sign however such lesions are seen in 2 to 3 per 100000 per 1000 of apparently normal newborn babies fibromatous plaque especially on forehead and scalp the fibromatous tumor are occasionally present on gum and palate so if only solitary plaque is present and there are no angiofibromas it is itself a diagnostic criteria mental deficiency is present in 60 to 70% of cases so a large population and it may be progressive the epilepsy is seen in almost all mentally retarded patients and some 70% of those with average intelligence the attack may be focal and often become progressive more frequent and severe the ocular signs retinal phacomas are seen in white streaks along the vessels of small rounded tumors near the disc heart and kidneys the cardiac rhabdomyomas and renal angiolipomas lung recurrent spontaneous pneumothorax and git shows hematomatous colonic polyps radiological features calcification is seen on plain skull x ray in about 50% of the patients ct findings include periventricular or subependymal nodules parenchymal hematomas that is the cortical tubers and ventriculomegaly cyst like lesions are seen in the phalanges course and prognosis expectation of life for a severely inf affected infant is poor 3% die in first year 28% under 10 years and 75% before 25 years death is usually due to epilepsy or intercurrent infection removing angiofibromas with pulse dye vascular laser wavelength 585 nanometer more papular nodular lesions are best treated with carbon dioxide laser early data suggests topical rapamycin at 1% or 2% concentration may be of great benefit in treating cutaneous angiofibromas and systemic rapamycin may be useful in therapy of visceral tumors and neurological complications including epilepsy neurosurgery should be considered when epilepsy is uncontrolled by drugs and there is a fixed circumscribed electroencephalic focus the third syndrome i am going to discuss today is the gardner syndrome gardner syndrome like the previous two syndromes is again autosomal dominant it's also labeled as apc adenomatous polyposis colli because the characteristic feature is the polyps in the colon and it is characterized by multiple epidermoid cysts fibrous tissue tumors osteomas and polyposis of the colon so there can be there will be uh, epidermoid cysts fibrous tumors osteomas and polyposis colli there is congenital hypertrophy of retinal pigment epithelium and is frequent finding that helps distinguish gardner syndrome for other apcs the syndrome is located on chromosome 5q near bands 5q21 and 22 the related disease is the turquoise syndrome having association of adenomatous polyposis colli and cns tumors usually medulloblastoma clinical features as already mentioned include epidermoid cysts which may be numerous irregularly distributed on face scalp and extremities osteomas develop on maxilla mandible sphenoid bone but in other bones of the skull it is usually small multiple and present in 50% of the cases 
fibromas or desmoid tumors are less frequently present fibrosarcomas are also seen lipoma in subcutaneous tissue and other organ have been noted leiomyoma in stomach ileum and sometimes is sometimes present polyposis of colon or rectum usually arise during the second decade but may occur in early childhood the malignant changes develop some 15 to 20 years later in over 40% of the reported cases so you can see the multiple epidermoid cyst osteomas in the oral mucosa and multiple polyposis coli diagnosis multiple epidermoid or sebaceous cysts may be inherited as an isolated abnormality and may thus have no sinister manifestations however their discovery is an indication for detailed family history and careful radiological and gi examination management the mainstay of treatment is surveillance for somatic cancer ideally under the direction of cancer genet uh, cancer genet genetists the last common syndrome i am going to discuss today is the cowden syndrome and this syndrome is also an autosomal dominant disorder that is characterized by multiple hematomas hematomatous lesions of ectodermal endodermal and mesodermal origin the condition is characterized by mucosal and cutaneous papillomatosis and fibromatosis main association it is with breast lesions which are fibroadenomas that are liable to undergo malignant degeneration and fibrocystic breast disease it is also associated with thyroid goiter or adenoma the risk of endometrial cancer may be high so the cowden syndrome is the hematomatous disorder of autosomal dominant inheritance that is characterized by mucosal and cutaneous cutaneous papillomatosis or fibromatosis and the other systems that are involved include breast thyroid and maybe endometrium the main lesion in thyroid is the fibroadenoma and fibrocystic breast disease and in thyroid goiter and adenoma cowden syndrome is one of the spectrum of disorders due to mutation in pt en gene phospho phosphatase and tensin homolog gene sometimes collectively termed as pt en hematomata hematoma syndromes PTEN hematoma syndrome or PHTS the description include cowden syndrome PTEN related proteus syndrome the banan riley revo uh, ruvel kaba syndrome and proteus like syndrome so in cowden syndrome the skin lesions are seen around mouth eyes and chin and all these papillomatous skin lesions are actually trichoelomas which are hair follicle tumors on dorsa of hand and wrist lesions are like acrokeratosis verruci formis on palm and plantar aspects of finger and toes there are small translucent keratosis there are multiple angiomas and lipomas in many cases verrucous and papillomatous lesions are seen in some patients on labial and buccal mucosae so these are trichoelomas similar lesions are seen on the oral mucosa tongue tongue and even in uh, gi tract these this is the histology of trichoelomas which appear as 
small clear cells within the epidermis with clear demarcation from the normal epidermis. So you can see the multiple trichelomomas on face of this individual. Acrokeratosis verruciformis like lesions on hand. Multiple punctate keratosis on palmar and plantar surfaces. Cobblestone ap stone appearance of buccal mucosa. The National Comprehensive Cancer Network, the CNCCN diagnostic criteria include the pathognomic criteria, trichelomomas, acral keratosis, papillomatous and mucosal lesions. Major criteria include the breast cancer, macrocephaly, thyroid cancer, and endometrial cancer. The minor criteria include thyroid adenoma or goiter, intellectual disability, hematomatous intestinal polyps, fibrocystic disease of breast, lipoma, fibroma, genitourinary manifestations, and uterine fibroids. A diagnosis is given if a patient has the pathognomic skin lesions, that is the trichelomomas, acral keratosis, papillomatous, and mucosal lesions. Two or more of the major criteria, that is the breast cancer, macrocephaly, thyroid cancer, endometrial cancer. One major and three or more minor criteria or four minor criteria. Management. After confirmation, children should have a neurodevelopmental assay, assessment. Adults should have a baseline thyroid ultrasound. Women of more than 30 years should be having a breast examination. And both men and women over 35 should have a clonoscopy. Recent reports shows targeted therapy with Sirolimus may be of value. Locally destructive therapies like cryotherapy, curitage, cautery are appropriate. Laser ablation and 5 fluorouracil 0.5% is helpful. Some centers recommend considering of prophylactic thyroidectomy. Other malignancies should be treated with usual therapies. So I thank you all for a patient listening and see you next time with another edition of my lectures. Goodbye and have a good day.